Hello friends, welcome to another video from Shomu's Biology and in this chapter we've been talking about the sexual reproduction in human and we've been looking at the human reproductive system both in male as well as in female. In the last class we talked about the reproductive system of men, now we'll talk about the reproductive system of women or female reproductive system. <clears throat> so again this video will be divided into two different uh, parts, the anatomical structures in one hand and we'll see why this structure is present. That means with this structure we'll correlate the idea of gametogenesis in female which is known as oogenesis. Okay, so let's look at it. So first of all if you look at this structure, <coughs> the major component of female reproductive system is the uterus. And if you look at uterus, it looks like an inverted pear. So you know normally the pear that looks something like this right this is how a pear looks like so if you invert it that's the kind of structure of a uterus and of a female reproductive system now <coughs> if you look at closely there is a muscular layer that are present and it will make a canal inside this canal inside is known as different they have different uh, what I can say the the diameter of this canal is different somewhere it's constricted somewhere it's relaxed so see <coughs> the canal at the end is known as cervical canal and it's very constrict okay and the cervical canal connected to a little wider space known as the cervix the this 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 constricted area of the pier that is the cervix if you invert it now this is also an important part so if you look at this whole structure this uterus is make, made with different layers of the tissue and you can see namely three separate layers endometrium myometrium and perimetrium perimetrium is the outermost layer myometrium is a thick muscular uh, middle layer endometrium is the inside the most inner layer so among these three perimetrium provides the outer structure and provides the support outside but the endometrium is the tissue layer where exactly after the fertilization of the embryo is implanted that's why you know whenever the egg is prepared by the female reproductive system and then the sperm is prepared by the male reproductive system then the sperm will fertilize the egg right by donating its nucleus so now the zygote with both the nucleus from egg and sperm will migrate and finally will be attached somewhere here in this endometrium that's the idea now remember one simple thing, female reproductive system is far more complex compared to a male reproductive system. Because in male reproductive system the only job is to produce numerous uh, gametes which are sperms. And we know the male reproductive system, this production of the sperm begins while they start to reach near puberty. Because they have all those uh, spermatogonium which are the mother sperm cells slowly mature enough to produce the sperm. But in case of female reproductive system, the one fine difference is the primary gametes or mother gamete cells of the female reproductive system known as oogonium. Oogonia as plural, oogonium as singular. So if I, let me erase this part. So let me begin with this term, oogonium. Okay. Now <clears throat> remember one simple thing, if you look at this whole structure, I told you the structure of the uterus and the uterus is the constricted part is the cervix and the cervical canal that opens up outside the body with vagina. That's the opening outside. Now you also remember in case of female reproductive system as well, it's also linked with the excretory system. So the urine also flows and comes out from this place. Now <clears throat> if you look at here the head of the uterus contains another muscular region known as uterine fundus and all these structures they are like a uh, these tissues are not s like like a smooth tissue they are also always like finger like projections like this now this is the central part of the uterus but now you can see there are two hands structures like a hands coming out from the uterus and the head of the uterus both of these hands this structure is known as what fallopian tube or ov duct same thing fallopian tube or oviduct now this fallopian tube plays a very very important role because this is the place inside which the fertilization will take place okay 
So if you look at the fallopian tube structure, it's like an arm come attached with the head and at the end of the arm, there are finger-like projections, which are known as the fimbri, you know, the structures, fimbri, okay, the cytosolic extensions. So now, if you look this, look at this uh, structure carefully, look at the structure of fallopian tube carefully, you can find one simple thing, that is, this, they have two types of regions, you know, the end, the end which carry the finger-like projections known as infundibulum. These are also infundibulum. Okay. Now, <clears throat> there's a constricted area and, and this is a very narrow area, right? And a very, very broad area. So the constricted or narrow area here is known as isthmus, this one. The broad area which is right linked with infundibulum known as ampulla. So these are the different names. So infundibulum, then slight less narrow, uh, like slightly narrower ampulla, the narrowest isthmus, okay, at the end, at the joint. These are the structures. <coughs> and this kind of isthmus or the narrow structure is really important because this is the place, this, this fallopian tube is the place through which the mature egg will take its journey. It will make its journey into the uterus. How? Where exactly the egg is produced? Now it comes the final component of the female reproductive system ovary okay two ovaries are present so two set of fallopian tubes are present fallopian tubes are normally 10 to 12 centimeter long now they are also bent at the end and they are they are placed in a way so that they are very close to the ovary because you know inside the ovary the egg will be matured the egg will be produced because you know in this ovary egg is not present from before egg needs to be matured and produced so what we have inside the ovary is the mother egg cell, which is known as, this is the mother egg cell, known as oogonium. So oogonia is present in this, inside the ovary. Now there are sequential steps, how this oogonium is slowly converted into the egg. So once the egg is produced, which is also known as the ovum, once it's produced, then it will start to be released from this ovary and then it will go in contact with the infundibulum as you know infundibulum produce a large surface area as you can see because their job is to catch the egg that is released from the ovary so infundibulum carrying this hand and finger like projections with long surface large surface area receives the the ovum and egg and then egg will make its journey through this fallopian tube that's the journey of an egg so this is the idea, okay? So now if I give you the overview of this whole process, is you know that first of all, inside the ovary, all the process take place. There is this mother egg cell. From that mother egg cell, slowly modification will, will continue. And different rounds of mitosis cell division as well as meiosis cell division are required to produce the haploid egg. Now if I ask you, what is the status of the mother cell? The mother oogonium is as it's, a, it's a diploid cell with two n number of chromosomes but the mature egg will be a haploid cell with n number of chromosomes so there are some modification going on in the middle we will talk about this process of the maturation and production of egg from the oogonium it's known as oogenesis we'll talk about that in a moment but remember the overall scheme of how the egg is released utilizing this female reproductive system that in this oogonium they slowly start to mature and produce uh, the primary spermatocyte uh, primary oocyte sorry primary oocyte from the primary oocyte it will produce secondary oocyte and from the secondary oocyte it will mature enough to produce the ovum or the egg but ultimately when they produce the egg the egg will come out right and then egg will take its journey through this fallopian tube because infundibulum will catch it and it will slowly make its journey through the fallopian tube and then what will happen inside the fallopian tube is very very important because I told you this is the place where a sperm will fertilize an egg right sperm will donate its nucleus inside the egg let's say here this is the egg which is fertilized because sperm will take its journey from this vagina inside through this cervix and cervical canal inside inside this uterus and through this uterus it will go and meet the egg in the fallopian tube so sperm needs to make a long journey 
that's why sperm needs that motility remember if you if you recall the last class i told you that sperm has this flagella large long flagella with which it can propel and rotate and can move from one place to the other place so that's how the sperm take its long journey inside uh, the fallopian tube and it fertilizes the egg inside the fallopian tube and once fertilized uh, once the egg is fertilized in the fallopian tube then what will happen the fertilized egg will slowly now take its journey towards the uterine wall and then they will reach this endometrium of the uterine wall and during this time <clears throat> the, the female body start producing so many different hormones and the presence of a very important hormone HCG human chorionic gonadotropin this human chorionic gonadotropin hormone will dictate the signal that the egg is fertilized so no further egg will be fertilized and no sperm entry will be entertained so the fertilized egg will be implanted into the endometrium wall it will be embedded into the endometrium wall and then this particular fertilized egg which is also known as zygote carrying two n number of chromosomes slowly start to mature from the zygote into morula then blastula then gastrula and slowly start to arrange and make different layers of tissues and there they produce three layers of tissues the mesoderm which is the middle layer and then the endoderm which is the innermost layer ectoderm the outermost layer from these three separate layers they produce different types of tissues in our body that's the idea that takes place after the implantation but implantation is a post fertilization event in human fertilization should carry on in the fallopian tube then the, uh, the, the implantation will take place in the endometrium wall that's the idea now have you ever imagined in this whole system and pathway what is the role of menstrual cycle it plays a very very important role because the menstrual cycle in female produces a female body to receive a sperm and their egg to be fertilized that's how the female body works you know i told you it's far more complex because long different range of hormonal interactions continue to go on but the idea is very simple that the female body once they reach the puberty they can produce mature ovum before they hit the puberty they fail to produce any mature ovum but once they produce mature ovum it is fertile that female will be termed as a fertile and at that condition they are prepared the uterus and the uterine wall is prepared every single month to receive sperm that's how they prepare for 14 stretch long stretch of days it's prepared itself it's preparing itself to to receive the sperm okay in absence of hcg because hcg will only be induced after the fertilization is successful so without the hcg it'll always prepare itself to take up the sperm but if the sperm is not present and if the ovum that is produced and making its journey through the fallopian tube is not fertilized then what will happen then the implantation does not take place then the process will halt and they are not only halt the process but the endometrium that they produce is so muscular here slowly start to degenerate and degrade and that will be released along with all the debris and blood coming out from the uh, blood vessels that are undergoing that that are growing under these tissues will also come out through this through this discharge of red blood discharge that is the idea of menstrual cycle this thing continues 28 days 14 days the time during the ovulation and then afterwards the time where they ultimately go through the menstruation phase these are the seg segment of the process that continues we'll talk about the menstrual cycle in details with an animation letter but this is the idea try to remember so the picture that we see here the muscular layer of endometrium it is not common it's only produced at the end point of the implantation when they think that yes everything is okay and we need to implant then only 